Hello again, guys. It's Greg Olo Productions here, and welcome back to the GPWS, where we're servicing a clock, which we have no idea if the thing will actually come apart. Okay, first order of business. I've seen other GE clocks get serviced. There are four screws up here, so we're going to start undoing these guys and just kind of see where this series takes us, because I have no idea. I don't know where this is going to go. Oh, look at that. There's like a tension washer type thing. Wow, that is a long screw. Okay, does that undo this plate as well, or is this riveted together? I guess we'll find out. Okay, well, there's that. Uh, make sure you have a parts container of some kind hanging around. And I'm going to grab one because I don't have one in front of me that I want to use. Here we go. It can be as simple as a Kirkland Costco yogurt container. <laughs> And yes, this is a Canadian program you're watching here. So I'm pretty sure this has, yeah, this has French on it. <laughs> so I don't speak French, mainly because I was never taught how. I don't know what that has to do with the series, but anyway, I guess I never had some burning desire to learn French. Maybe I should sometime. Hmm. Anyway, that's not relevant. Let's get this off. More tension type stuff. I don't know. As you can see, this clock is in two layers. There's the rotor area up here. Here's our S rotor. Here's where everything has gone wrong. And then there's our gear train below, which usually we try to get into. But I don't know how how much of a good time we're going to have servicing this because I don't know how much of this comes apart. Okay, are you going to come apart now? Okay, this comes apart. All that stuff there. I'm just undoing screws right now, viewers. There's nothing. Oops. There's nothing particularly insane going on right now. We'll study the gear train more when we actually have this guy open. And I know that, like, if you're filming this yourself, if you're filming one of these videos yourself, you want to be a YouTuber and do this or whatever, or you want to film it for your own personal use then make sure you document as much as you can what the heck is going on over here this is what i'm talking about here like the, the, it makes it so much easier for reassembly when you actually bother to film it okay that's all coming up okay let's kind of get the camera in closer let's undo on this side here as well or undo this screw here there's no washers on this side not sure why that is Okay, this guy, how do you come off? Shoot, does this thing come out? Okay, so that, that guy there pops out of here. There's a slot for that. Um, okay, where does this go? What is this? There's a support under here. I don't know where that goes. Oh, there's two of them. Okay, there's supports for this underneath. Okay, not sure really how these go on. Uh, okay. I'm just going to take that apart for now. We're going to take our coil assembly out of here. It looks like our movement's already riveted together. I'm just, just by looking at that. Okay, there's a nut, there's nuts and bolts here. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Okay, that's good. Get that off. I've never worked on a GE like this before, so this is a first time experience for me. Okay, that screw comes off. It goes on, kind of goes together like that. And here we are, that screw comes off there. Yeah, oh, there's different lengths of screws. <laughs> uh, there might have been some screw replacing going on here at some points. Anyway. So one nut, one screw, one, all that, all that. I don't know if this stuff here should be cleaned, viewers. Maybe brushed off, because this is all electrical contact type stuff, so I'm just going to brush it off. I don't think I'm going to really clean it. Our coil, which I'm not going to do any real, uh, you know what, might be wise. You know what, viewers, it might actually be wise to just um, leave this cord on here and just heat shrink to, like, just basically leave the first little bit of it on here and then and then solder a new cord onto this because i'm not really i always hate it when i have to deal with stuff like this where although hold on although it looks like there's a hole there and then it's soldered on you can see their viewers here if i actually zoom in sorry i'm just sometimes i get so caught up in looking at things for myself i don't even worry about the camera okay yeah there's a hole in there 
Okay, you know what? We're just going to solder directly to the leads then. Yeah, because there's a hole in this little plate here. And the cord goes through there and is soldered on. Actually, that's not a bad system. I kind of like that, actually. That's not terrible. I'm, I'm, gonna not, I'm not taking the coil apart or anything. Okay, and here's our tiny little GE rotor. You know, these are smaller than I thought they'd be. <laughs> and what is this? Does it say on it what this is? 3.6 RPM. Uh, oh, look at that. Someone has... Wow. I think someone made a hole in this thing and tried to revive it. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I think somebody... Although, is that a hole, though? Because the M is so perfectly lined up with that. I don't know. I don't know. This thing, uh, it's, it's hard to tell because... Okay, if we just think about this for a second. You're a small town clock repair guy. I'm just going to move the movement out of here for just a minute. Small town clock repair guy. Shoot, your GE doesn't work anymore. Um, it This probably gave 20 to 30 years of service before having this issue. Would you... Uh, I don't know if this would be... Well, I don't know if the guy, like, here, here's here's my thought process, viewers. I'm almost thinking this guy who repaired this went to YouTube and possibly did the hole in the rotor method and tried to clean it out that way. Crazy, I know. Because usually when you, when you get these clocks apart and you're filming it, you're usually the first guy to be in here. Being the first guy to one of these is not uncommon. But that's a fairly far-fetched idea. I highly doubt he went to YouTube. I, he might have just come up with that on his own. I don't even know if that is a hole. Because look at how perfect the M on RPM is with that. Although this does look very kind of shoddy. The M is just ever so slightly blocked. I don't know. We're going to try the, the heat up the rotor method and just see what the heck happens at this point, viewers. Because I don't know. I don't know if the guy went to YouTube. I don't know if he just thought of that himself. If he cut a hole in it and tried to clean it out that way. I don't know what he was doing. You can see, viewers, also how these guys are, like, they don't come apart. At least not that I know of. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure these are pressed together. I don't think this rotor is going to pop open that way. No. There, there has to be a way to get these open, though. I, I kind of, I'm kind of thinking it's some, someone has made some specialty tool and is now running a business of just popping these open and selling them for 100 bucks. Okay, well, anyway, we're going to try and heat it up and then put new oil in through where this gear is, like the first kick of the CAD Productions did. And something fell off here. the heck is going on here? Okay, this guy goes there somehow. Uh, I think there's the controller tuner or whatever the heck it's called. That wheel there. Okay, not entirely sure where this stuff is going right now. Okay, very interesting. There's also some kind of washer thing here. Once again, I have no idea where that goes. Uh, I'll try and work it out later. And as for our movement, oh, okay, there's the on and off. There's the alarm on and off. Here's our mechanical area. Let's see, how are we working here? Okay, there's a, oh, okay. Uh, how does this guy work? And the question is, would it be wise to undo these screws at the front? I just realized this is not riveted together. And can I get in here and actually service this and do like a deep cleaning of this? Hmm. Not entirely sure. Because it seems like everything is basically game to come off, except for that. I don't know if these knobs come off. Are these unscrewable? Looks like they are. This guy here doesn't look like he comes off. What do you do? Why are you like this? Here's the, t here's the tuner knob. I'm not sure what this guy does. Whoops. It's all very interesting. Kind of playing around with it. it. Seems to get tight somehow on one end. Oh, because there's like a... Oh, that's interesting. Check that out, viewers. This thing has some sort of... 
Oh, this is really simple. <laughs> okay, here's our buzzer. And this guy is able to move the buzzer around using a slightly offset piece of brass. And it's, it, oh, that's smart. It pushes it up or down and you can actually change the tune of the alarm. So this is a very simple thing here. This is just on the top here, this, this little tuner. Uh, this would be with the top plate, so we don't have to worry about taking the knob off or anything because there's nothing holding it on here. Okay. And there's our actual time train in there. I don't know how much of this you can play with, if that makes any sense. I don't know how much of this we can mess with before things and mess with being literally this wheel here. Will that come off, I wonder? Will any of this come off? Oh, 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 game changer viewers, big game changer. Okay, this wheel just stays with the top plate. Check out this. This guy just pops right out of there. Oh, what the heck am I doing? Okay, we can actually deep clean this movement. Well, viewers, that's a grand slam if I've ever seen one. This wheel here, pops out of this pressed on wheel here, which means it's not actually attached to the front plate in that way. So this wheel does stay on here, but the rest of this can come off. That's terrific. Okay, is anything else stuck to the front plate that I should know about? No. Okay. Looks like we can take this guy apart. Terrific. Uh, okay, let's analyze our time train here because this is all gonna come falling apart, especially because it's assembled like this. This is all just gonna fall apart in my hands here, and I'm not going to know what the heck I'm doing. Okay, there's where the rotor goes. There is our first wheel. My stupid phone light isn't working for some reason. See, if my phone light was actually working, then I could, like, turn it on and, oh, I don't know, record what this looks like in here. Okay, so there's our wheel there. Our first wheel, second wheel. Where's the, what is the second wheel attached to? Anything? Doesn't look like it. Where's the, what's the flag doing? Oh, the flag is actually falling out of its pivot, weirdly enough. Okay. Um, not sure what's going on there. Okay, first wheel. Second wheel. There's the flag there. It goes right back into the center for the third wheel. Then there's a fourth wheel here, which goes to the alarm. And there's a wheel here, which goes with this, I believe this is the time setting knob. Yep. There's a big, there's a big can, look at that thing, wow. That's a heavy duty wheel if I've ever seen one, which works with the alarm. And does all this other little stuff here. And of course there's our alarm tension wheel, which stays with the top plate. Okay. So let's just kind of do one more quick view around the whole thing because I just want to, just for the sake of just recording it and just kind of knowing where everything goes. And you're probably asking me, viewers, Greg, why are you wasting your time even taking this apart? Well, because of all these old, disgusting oils and stuff on the pivots. If that is unattended to, it will wear the pivots down. And on movements that you can't take apart, you can kind of clean them. You know, you can kind of get that stuff off, but it's it's just better to take it apart, really, viewers. It's just so much easier in every single way. And I've just realized that I've actually filmed it technically upside down because the top plate, because it's going to go back together like this. So I better film it this way. Actually, take let's take the knobs off. Yeah, taking, taking this stuff apart is way better for cleaning and servicing than just kind of throwing this, for instance, in an ultrasonic cleaner and just going from there. And it's just not even going to come off. If this knob comes off, we're kind of dead in the water. Uh, okay, I don't know why this guy's not moving. Hmm, that's not good. Yeah, sometimes knobs want to just be a total nightmare to take off. Okay. Since it's such a tall shaft, and it looks like there's threads there. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's not good. Of course, I'm not going to risk ripping the knob off, although it does look like it comes off that way. Oh, this looks like a total nuisance to reassemble, though. Because it would be standing up like that. I guess it could work. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I don't know if this guy does come off. Let's just try and put a little bit of oil in this thing on both of these guys and just kind of see if we can get it to come off. This is my old junk oil there that I use for tasks like this. Why are you not moving? Shoot. Come on. I don't want to scratch up the... Yeah, I'm just scratching up the, the pole there, the shaft. Hmm. Too bad I don't have, like, a proper, like, clamp. If I had that, I could probably get it off. Let me just, you know... You guys know how vice grips are. If I had a vice grip kind of clamp thing, I could just snap that on and take it off. Yeah, these knobs are tight. I don't even know if that other one comes off, period. Well, we're gonna... <laughs> we're just gonna pop it apart on this side. And just see what goes on. And just see what happens, I guess. Okay. And there's a screw being really not enjoyable today. I don't know what... I don't know how I'm gonna get this together again with that weird kind of... The way this is made, but anyway... All the knobs standing up like that. Okay. And now we can pull it all apart. Oh, that was simple. Wow. Um, okay, I guess that's it. Uh, nothing is going anywhere. And, I, you know, usually with this stuff, it all just falls apart in your hands, but not this time. And since our knobs are designed to be f this way... You know, they're just not coming apart, so that's really decent. Is this coming off? This wheel might not. This this guy might stay on. Uh, there's our power outage flag. Taking that off. There's this guy. Nice. This is really act working really conveniently, actually. That is a heavy-duty wheel there. This guy has a knob on him, so he's probably going to stay there. Wow. Okay, here's this guy. Coming off. Oh, this is all the center wheel stuff. There's that. Is this guy riveted on? Uh, I don't know what this is. Oh, that has a knob on it too. Wow, okay. So I guess only a few things are coming off here, looks like. And that guy is riveted on this wheel here, so he's not going anywhere. Okay, well, that's still better than than uh, than nothing, you know. Uh, these guys, the knob guys, you know what? <laughs> I'm not even going to bother taking those off. I this this is good enough. This this really is. This is more than I expected out of a GE uh where I thought the whole thing would basically be stuck together the entire time and just not want to work at all. You know. This this is terrific. Okay, uh let's clean our movement, shall we? Actually, I think I'm going to stop the video here and I can clean the movement in the next part and then we can Put it back together after that and get to our rotor and see where that takes us. On that note, viewers, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a lot of fumbling around. I've never actually worked on a GE like this before. Hopefully it's not a nightmare to put back together again. And otherwise, viewers, thank you guys for stopping by.